Hello! Welcome to Teach Me Maths. My name is Jonathan Hicks. Today we're doing the mean of a frequency distribution. Now you need to know what a mean is before you watch this. So if you're not sure how to find the mean for a simple list of numbers, then go and watch the mean, median and mode video and then come back here. I'll explain what a frequency distribution is, but before I do that, let me give you an example, sort of put it in a bit of context if you like. So imagine you wanted to find out how many children a whole bunch of couples had. So you go around all these different couples and to each couple you say, how many children do you have? And they tell you, maybe they have three or one or maybe they don't have any or seven. And you write down all the numbers, so all the numbers of children that those couples have in a list. So for example, let's say the first family you go to have got three children. So you write down three. And maybe the next couple you go to has got one child. So you write down one. Maybe the next couple doesn't have any children. So you write down zero. And then maybe the next family has one child again. And then the next family has one again. And then the next family has four children. And you carry on going like this. So you act, asked a whole bunch of families how many children they have. Now, if this was just a short list of numbers and we wanted to find the mean, you would simply add them all up and divide by however many numbers there are. However, if it's a long list of numbers, and this, these lists of numbers can get very long, you know, you can have up to 100 numbers potentially in these lists, you don't want to be having to add up all the numbers in a huge long list of numbers like that. It would work, it would just take a long time. So when you have long lists of numbers, rather than writing out the entire list, what we tend to do is group them into what we call a frequency table or a frequency distribution. So I'll just take a second to quickly draw what the table will look like and then I'll explain what it means. All right, there's the table. So it always starts off <clears throat> on the left hand side with what you're trying to measure. It's the answer to the question you've asked. So in this case, we went around all the couples and asked, how many children do they have? So this left-hand column is gonna be the number of children. And usually, that's the number of children in this case, is given the symbol X. So whatever it is you're measuring, whatever you've asked about, is usually called X. The X's are the answers, if you like. So X might be zero if they didn't have any children, or X could be one or two or three or four. We'll say that no family that we asked had more than four children. The next column along then is always what's called the frequency column. And the frequency, uh, frequency in general in statistics is an important word, and it just means the number of whatever you're dealing with. So the frequency in this context means the number of families that have that many children. So what you would do in compiling your frequency table is you would look at your long list of numbers and you'd count how many there are of each of these numbers. So you'd go through all the, num uh, all the long list of numbers and you first of all count how many zeros there are. So let's imagine when we count through our list of numbers that there are three zeros in the list. Then you go through and count all the ones and maybe there's five and we'll have eight twos, seven threes and uh, actually, let me just make these line up a little bit better. So eight will go there, seven there and we'll just have one family that's got four children there. So um, I'll just take a few more lines in there just so you can see this slightly more clearly. All right, so these are the numbers of children that the families could have, and this is how many families have that many children. So seven families have got three children, for example. That means there would be seven threes in the list. Now I'm stressing this because a lot of the time when you're asked to find the mean of a frequency distribution, people just see a sort of table with a list of numbers and it's like, ah, what do I do with that? I don't know what it means. If you understand what it represents, that at the end of the day it's just a shorthand for a long list of numbers, actually it's very easy to do these questions in practice. But the reason a lot of people find it hard is because they get confused about what the table means. So keep the ideas clear in your head and you should be okay with this. So when you're given a question, finding the mean of a frequency distribution in a test, for example, usually they give you the frequency table. You don't have to construct this yourself from the long list of numbers. In fact, in general, they don't give you the long list of numbers at all. They just give you the shorthand, this frequency distribution 
for the long list of numbers and you kind of have to imagine what the long list of numbers might be. So when they ask you to find the mean of this, and that's what the question would say typically, find the mean of this frequency distribution, they're not asking you to find the mean of this list of numbers or this list of numbers. They're asking you to find the mean of the long list of numbers that this is just a shorthand for. So that's the first thing you've got to watch out for. A lot of people will add up all of these numbers and divide by one, two, three, four, five or something. And that's not going to give you the right answer. This is just shorthand for the long list of numbers. And when you're finding the mean, it's always the mean of the long list of numbers. You've got to add up all the numbers in the long list and then divide by however many numbers there are. And that's the first thing. How many numbers are there in the long list? Well, if there are three zeros and five ones and eight twos and seven threes and one four, that's how many of each of the numbers there are. So if I add up all of those numbers, I'm going to find out how many numbers there are in total. Now, in maths, we use a little shorthand symbol for meaning the sum of, or what you get when you add them all up. And it's a Greek letter sigma. I'll just show you that first. So typically, it looks like that. That's a sigma. And if you write sigma f, for example, the frequency numbers are the f numbers then that means the sum of all the f numbers. It's what you get when you add up all the f numbers. So if we add up all of these numbers, so let's just quickly do that, 3 plus 5 gives you 8, plus another 8 is 16, plus 7 is 23, plus 1 is 24. So all together there must be 24 numbers in the long list of numbers. So at the bottom typically of this one, you, if I stick another line under there, so if I write sigma f equals 24, yeah, the total of all those numbers is 24. So what we've got to do is add up all the long list of numbers and then divide by 24. But we don't have the long list of numbers. How can we add them all up? You just use the table and actually it's much easier to do it with the table, which is why they tend to put these kinds of sets of data in tables because it is easier to deal with once you understand what it's talking about. The way you do it is you add up each set of numbers per group and then combine them all at the end. So let me stick one more column on the end here, I'll explain what I mean. So what we're going to do is we're going to add up all the zeros first. There are three zeros, so if you add up all three zeros, zero plus zero plus zero, well you just get zero. And this final column is for the sum of all the zeros, in fact it's going to be for all the different categories. But if you add up all the zeros, you get nothing. There are five ones in our list. So if you add up all the ones, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, you get 5. There are 8 twos, so 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, etc. If you add up 8 twos, you're going to get 16. And you've probably spotted by now that you can actually just multiply these two numbers together to get this. If there are 7 threes in the list, then, well, 7 threes are 21. So when you add up all the threes, you're going to get 21. There's one four in the list, so when you add up all the fours, the only four, you're going to get four. Now the title for this column here is usually the FX column. That's not special effects. That's in algebra, if you write two things next to each other, it always means times. They're multiplying each other. So FX means the F numbers times the X numbers, i.e. these numbers times these numbers. So typically when they give you this question, they'll give you that bit of the table and they leave a blank column here for you to do something with. And what you do with it is you multiply each of these numbers. You write fx at the top here, and you do 0 times 3 to give you 0, 1 5 is 5, 2 8 is 16, etc. So this is the total of all the zeros. This is the total of all the 5, of all the 1s, sorry. This is the total of all the 2s, etc. Yeah, this is the total of the 3s and this is the total of the 4s. So if these are the totals of each of the groups, if I add up all the totals, I get the grand total. What you would get if you added up all the numbers in the long list of numbers. So if we could do that now, so 5 plus 16 is 21. Add that to another 21, you get 42. Plus 4 gives you 46. So where, the way I'm going to write this is sigma, again, fx. Yeah, that means the sum of the fx numbers equals 46. So if I were to write out all the numbers in the list and then add them all up, I would get 46. 
But the advantage of this table is I don't need to do that. I don't need to write out all the numbers and add them up. I just multiply these to get the totals for each category and then add up the totals to get the final total at the bottom. So to find the mean, just like the mean of any list of numbers, add them all up, which we've done, 46, and divide by however many there are, 24. So the mean equals 46 divided by 24. At that point, you probably want to reach for your calculator. So 46 divided by 24 gives me a long decimal number with lots of decimal places. Let me write it out and we'll see what you deal, how you deal with this. So I've got 1.916666666, etc. Lots of sixes. Now you do need to round this. You shouldn't just write down all the numbers on your calculator. Typically, if it doesn't tell you how many decimal places to use, then I would go with one or two. It doesn't really matter as long as you round correctly. That's the important thing. So I'd rather be safe and sorry, so I tend to put more decimal places rather than less. So I'm going to go with two decimal places. But as I say, it doesn't matter too much as long as you round correctly. So two decimal places, your line would go there. Look at the next one. It's five or more, which means this one has to go up. It goes up to a two. So to two decimal places, it's 1.92. And you should specify the accuracy. You should say how many decimal places you've rounded to. So the mean here is 1.92. 1.92 what? Well, if you go back to the context here, we asked all of these families, from our long list of numbers, how many children each of them had. And the mean always refers to what you asked. So this 1.92 is the mean number of children in each family. That means an average family from our group that we asked have got 1.92 children. How can a family have 1.92 children? Well, they can't. And I did talk about this in the mean, median, and mode video. Obviously, you can't have 1.92 children. Children come in whole numbers. You might have one, child, one child, or two children, or three children. You can't have 1.92. But the mean is still important. These decimal places do have some extra meaning that they carry with them. So if the mean is 1.92, that means the average number of children is a little less than two. So you've got quite a few children or quite a few families rather, who've got two or more children, and some families who've got one or less children, but the average, the mean, is much closer to two. So you're actually gonna have more families up at this top end. And you can see we've got eight and seven and one here, and there's only five and three at the bottom end. So it is giving you extra information, so you should keep those decimal places there. So that's how you find the mean of a frequency distribution. Let me just summarize that quickly. They'll give you that bit of the table, minus that column, and they'll usually leave a free column there. So you just multiply each of these to get these, add all those up, add all these up, and divide the total of all the numbers by how many numbers are in the list. Do that on the calculator, out pops the answer, make sure you round correctly. You can't just throw the numbers away. Now, if you understand why that works, it makes it much easier. This is a bit of a random process to simply remember, okay, multiply, then add up, and divide, and you get your answer. But if you realize that this is just shorthand for a long list of numbers, it makes it a much easier, I think, because you understand why you're multiplying. Yeah, you're adding up each of these categories. There are eight twos in the list, so you add up all the twos, you get 16. That's why we're multiplying. So if you can keep those concepts in your head, it'll help a lot. When you come on to doing median and mode for a frequency distribution, you really need to get those concepts or you'll never manage it. But for mean, that's the method you use. My name is Jonathan Hicks and you're watching Teach Me Maths. Mm -hmm.